Right guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you how to magnetize this. This is either a Stonehorn or Thunder Tusk from the Beast Claw Raiders range of Adria Sigma. There's a number of different ways you can build it. There's two different beasts that you can build it as and there's three different riders that you can build on top of each of them. So six possibilities and of course with different weapons and everything as well. So I'm going to show you how I have managed to magnetize all three of mine. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to magnetize the head so we built the entire body but left this canopy off the top and we built both the heads as well so that's the thunder tusk head and we've got the stone horn head there as well. I've seen people do it in various different ways but after I've done three this is just what I feel is the best way. So we need to drill a hole in here and what we're going to do is put some magnets in there but they're going to be held together uh, with a little bit of green stuff now unfortunately I've run out of green stuff after just doing the other two stone horns so I'm going to have to use a little bit of DAS now the magnets that we use I've got these from eBay and I don't want to put them too close to the camera these are I think 8 by 5 millimeter N52 neodyme magnets um, I think they've got about uh, I don't even I have five stacks that size anyway for about eight pound. Um, obviously, these are really thick and actually quite strong. So what I'm going to do is because the heads are, are quite heavy, you could probably get away with one magnet, um, but I'm actually going to put two in each side. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is drill a hole in here. So because it's an eight mil wide magnet, I'm actually using me, me electric drill. And I'm going to drill an 8mm hole straight in the middle of there and of course in the back of the heads. So um, I'll stop the camera and I'll restart it so that I can mute this part because obviously the drill is going to be very loud. So watch along um, and obviously we'll talk about once I've drilled the hole. So that's the body, and we'll just give it a bit of a clean there with the knife because obviously you're going to get a little bit where the plastic is melted. It does take a while to get through, so be careful, um, especially that little bit of give at the end when it goes through. Really take your time with drilling through on that bit. So there we go. We know roughly now where the, the hole is. So what we're going to do is just sit the head in place. Just have a little look through the gap there. Put a mark on with the knife and then what I'm going to do is just flatten off the surface a little bit there and do the same with the stone horn head. Stone horn head sits slightly to one side. Again, flatten the head down just so that you can get the drill on there. Now what I'm going to do for this part, I'm actually going to drill a pilot hole. This is, uh, I think this is a three millimeter um, drill bit and then go back through with the eight mil. So let's do that. So there we go, we've got the holes in all of the big bits, so just going to clean off all the excess plastic because with the drill bit getting quite hot, uh, whilst drilling the plastic it does melt it a little bit, so just clean the edges there with a knife. And of course the same with the other head, and just make sure that the head then sits flush against the body when you come to do that. So. The next step 
is using the green stuff or in my case DAS because I've run out of green stuff. DAS is basically modeling clay. I hope it sets as strong as green stuff. Basically I'm going to make a lump to kind of sit here to squash two of the magnets into. So plastic there and then just make oh I've cut myself make a kind of a cup shape like that and sit it inside See there, if you squash it right down in the position, you can see there there's kind of a little bit of a bevel in the middle there. But this is the next bit where you want to take your magnets. Like I said, I'm going to be using two. Uh, I've super glued two together just to make sure that they do stay together and just push them in so that they're flat like that. I'll make sure that you really work the clear around them to make sure that it's very well packed in and of course the magnets sit flush then what you want to do is let that entirely set um, and then the magnets will probably just drop back out if you use another magnet needle to pull them out drop some super glue in and put them in place now, I'm going to do a similar thing now with the heads but because the heads are hollow, it's very difficult to try and get the magnet in. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll some of the clear into a couple of thin strips. And basically just going to feed it into the head and basically fill the head out. So that when we sink the magnets in, they've got something to sit on or against. Again, obviously you're probably better off doing this with green stuff. Green stuff's got a little bit more tack than the clear. But there's no harm in doing it with the clear. And then what you want to do is put another two magnets in there. Now you need to make sure that these are the right way around because you don't want to glue them into the head to try and attach them to the body for them to end up repelling. So, I've done this the same way as me other two. So I'm just doing it by checking. Now I can feel there that they are pulling together, so I know that that's going to be the right way. And then I can sink those two into there so that it's nice and flush there. And again, let the clear dry, uh, or your green stuff. The green stuff will probably actually keep hold of the magnets well enough, but I'm gonna put super glue in there anyway, just to make sure. Now, I'm not gonna put these together, um, because it will pull the magnets out, but I can feel them pulling together there, and obviously I know that well, there you go. So I'll, I'll pull them out and put them back in, but we know that that is going to hold. And we're going to do the same again with the stone horn head. So again, just rolling some clear, in fact I've got some there, into some thin strips, just to fill out the bulk of the hollow head. jam it in there. There's a lot of empty space in that head. That's probably as much as I'm going to be able to get in. And then back to the other two magnets and again check the direction that you're gluing these in because you, like I said you don't want to glue them in back to front to 
then have to pull them apart. Uh, pull your model apart and reset the magnets. So again, I'll just double check by holding them near each other here. Now I can feel that they're repelling each other. So I know that they need to go that way. Yep, I can feel the pull from them there. So, sink the magnets into the head there. And again, oh, there you go. So, I'll get the magnets out and we'll sink them back into those. I do have camera though, because six magnets in a row is quite hard to separate. Okay, so this is the rider of the beast. This is going to be the guy that sits at the front, so it'll be your husk guard. Thunder Tusk or the front guy of the two beasts uh, for the Beast Rider itself. So, as you can see, this bit here is very, very, it's not flat, you can't magnetize it very well at all. So, what I'm going to do is just very carefully slice it flat. Just taking a little bit off with a knife to even it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in there, but then on each of the arms, we're gonna drill a two mil hole down there. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm also gonna do this method, um, I've already done it with the other ones like I said, so I'll only show you the one, uh, how to do the one on camera. Um, but we've got the vulture there, and as you can see there's a magnet in the bottom. And then we've got the chain trap there, and I've got the crossbow somewhere on my desk. Um, but of course then this is the Frost Lord's Spear. So, I'll show you how to drill that now. And I'm going to use the 3mm um, drill bit that we just used, or the 2mm one rather. And I've got some 2mm magnets that I picked up off eBay. These are 2mm uh, wide I think, by 3mm deep. It's very hard to see them there, but basically I'm going to sink one into his shoulder and one into the arm. Again, making sure that the direction uh, is always attracting and not repelling. So, let's drill those holes. Right, so to make sure I do these the right way, I've attached the rest of the magnets onto the chain trap arm and what we can do is, from that, establish which direction the magnets need to be glued from. So, we've got the frost lord there and the way I do this is I basically cut the magnet off at the join. Like that. So that I know that the outside of the magnet is the one that needs to go into the body itself. Use a tiny bit of super glue. In the gap. And then I essentially use the knife to place it in like that. And you can pull the knife away and then that's lovely and flat and sunk in. So we do the same thing again with the Arm, but obviously this time we can't, we've got to do it the opposite way. So again, cut my magnet off at the join. Now this time I know it needs to be the opposite way around. So swap sides of the magnet. So now I can just drop it straight, and it's still the same way. I've just put it on the other side of the blade. So super glue. into the hole. Now this one is a little bit harder and trickier because of how far down into the gap it goes. And there we go. Let's show you that now. Right, so here we go. All the parts are now magnetized. So we've got the crossbow, got the blood vulture, Got the frost spear, and we've got the chain trap. The chain trap 
probably could do with a little bit stronger magnet because of how long it is. It does move very, very easily. So that one could do with maybe two magnets sinking in, so it's a little bit deeper. But um, what I've done is to get the maximum number of choices out of the entire kit um, is don't put the crossbow or don't magnetize the crossbow for the frost lord. I've done it in this instance um, because I've got three kits and I wanted to show you the full lot but if you've only got one kit you kind of have to sacrifice this and this is this is the front rider so you can basically have them as a frost lord or you can have them as the husk guard with the chain trap or the blood vulture. So how do we then make that onto the beasts? Well, it was a bit awkward. So we've got the beast here, and I'll just zoom out ever so slightly. Actually, I can't. So obviously the, the head's magnetized, we can swap the head. We're more interested now in the riders. So if you want the Frost Lord, now normally you would build this seat. But what I've discovered uh, is when you build this seat, if you try to add the other one on, it doesn't work. So, if you're just building your Frost Lord or Husk Guard and you want to use that seat, that's absolutely fine. But, if we simply rest that piece on there, this is the piece without the back seat, you want to use the front seat from the Beast pair, basically, the, the paired riders, you want to use the front seat, and then of course, that's, you can leave that glued on permanently. Um, but then you sit your rider on top as normal. Obviously I haven't glued the seat on yet because I want to paint mine separately. But there you go, that would be your Husk Guard or your Frost Lord and then you just change the head uh, for the Thunder Tusk or Stonehorn. However, to change this into the paired riders, all you need to do is take off the back piece there and you build the other seat separately. And I've actually got two here, I picked up the wrong one. So I've glued the back piece onto this one as well. So again, you would just sit that on there. You don't have to glue those two pieces. I mean, obviously I'm gonna glue this seat here. And then the other guy. Now, the guy at the back has to have the crossbow. So I've glued this one on because I'm always gonna have at least one uh, pair of riders. So this guy gets glued on and of course once he's painted up he will be glued onto there. Now what it means if you've only got the one kit, I'm going to turn it around, this guy at the front can be magnetized as chain trap, blood vulture or like I said you can take the back seat off and swap it and then there you go, here's your frost lord. So that is how easy it is to magnetize. Uh, the only thing that I haven't done yet is magnetize the reins, but it works in much the same fashion as what the arms uh, do. So you can see there, in fact, he wouldn't have that weapon. But there you go. So you can change the, the blood vulture or the chain trap and you can have them as the pair. You change the head and you have the husk guard, uh, sorry, the thunder tusk or the stone horn. And then to change them to a Frost Lord or Husk Guard, you simply lift that piece off and lift that piece back in. And again, swap the weapons around as you see fit. The only problem with only having one kit is you won't get a Husk Guard with a crossbow. Uh, and again, unless you magnetize uh, the other arm, which is entirely possible. So that's how I've managed to magnetize up um, the Thunder Tusk and Stonehorn. I hope that's been helpful for you uh, and you can be sure that you'll see these on the channel very soon. So thanks very much for watching guys and we'll see you again next time.